Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Sarah Steffen with Aligned and Alive, and today I'm gonna to teach you how to read through some of the results from labs or blood work that you might get. I often talk to people in my office about results from their blood work, and many times they people are really concerned um, about different numbers, or sometimes they're not concerned enough about other numbers. And so today I'm gonna to walk you through some results that I just got from some exams that I had done. So these are my results. I had some life insurance recently um, done, which means you have to have a life insurance physical, and they do a blood draw. It's kind of nice, actually, because they come to your house, they draw your blood, and there's no charge for it, right? In order to get the life insurance policy, you have to have this done so that they will willingly insure you. Um, and I just had a conversation literally last night with a patient of mine about how expensive blood draws can be. Um, it's kind of ridiculous how much a hospital can charge or a clinic can charge to have blood draws done for someone who wants to find out more about their health and is proactively looking and wanting numbers to be able to manage what's going on. And yet it might cost you three, four, five, six hundred dollars to get your cholesterol panel or to get a full thyroid panel, right? And it's, so it's a big racket of mine. So having the ability to have these numbers sent directly to me after I had it for the blood analysis with the, with the life insurance was really awesome. So I'm gonna walk you through some of my results from these, not all of them, but I'm gonna go through some of the more um, challenging ones maybe to read and to understand. And so that you have an idea of when you get this done for yourself, like, hey, is this normal? Is this not normal? Do I need to worry about this? Do I not need to worry about this? So we're gonna start right at the, right at the top. Um, and I will kind of give you a disclaimer. Most of my numbers are really pretty good, right? So my cholesterol, my total cholesterol was 168. Right in the green range, right in the middle of the green range. That's a good number. They, the medical world will tell you that a number under 200 is ideal. I will tell you that it is not really worthwhile to only look at that total cholesterol number. If you're only looking at total cholesterol, and if your physician is only looking at that total cholesterol number, they're missing the boat at this point because there's a lot within that number that you have to dissect. And most of that now is broken down for you. And it is kind of archaic to only look at that number to see if you're healthy or not, right? Um, what I mean by that is I, we get it broken down into HDL, high density lipoproteins, LDLs, low, dense, low uh, density lipoproteins, and then also triglycerides. Those three numbers are, in my opinion, more important to look at than that total cholesterol number. So let's look at HDL. You can think of HDL as the good cholesterol. I think about like heart, healthy, H, good, right? So if you have a higher HDL level, that probably means that your heart is healthy and your cholesterol is doing pretty well. Um, normal is anywhere from the way they have it on my test results, anywhere between 40 and like 70. I was at 81.3. So I'm actually in the high HDL category. Not that I'm worried about it because again, HDL typically for the most part is very healthy and protective of your heart and your health. Uh, if it was really high, then I might have a concern. Uh, but it is just on the um, other side of the normal range, so I'm totally fine with it. Especially when you compare that and you uh, add that in with my LDL numbers. So my LDL numbers, which is your low density lipoproteins, most people think of those as more like bad cholesterol. Normal again is anywhere between 80 on my, my range here, 80 and I don't even know what that is, maybe 200. Um, mine was 75. So I'm on the red on the low end. I actually have lower LDL than they consider normal. Again, I'm okay with that. Now the next thing that's on my labs is my triglycerides. Triglycerides have really been a buzz topic of the last few years. And that's because I think triglycerides are more important to look at than LDL and HDL, right? So if you have high triglycerides, that might be a bigger concern than if you had a higher total cholesterol. A lot of times uh, triglycerides are in direct 
opposition to your HDL level. So if you have low HDL, your triglycerides are probably going to be higher. If you have higher HDL like I do, your LDLs, or excuse me, your, your triglycerides are probably going to be lower. And that's exactly what we found here. So my triglyceride level is in really the very normal range of 56, right? Um, looks great. I'm not concerned at all about my triglycerides. If you are concerned about your cholesterol, I have this conversation quite frequently in my office. I am not actually concerned about your cholesterol unless it's like over 500, right, for that total number. And that's because we know based on research and studies that are out there that low cholesterol is more of a risk for all-cause mortality than high cholesterol. This is why it's so mind-boggling why we have statins, which are the cholesterol-lowering drugs, being such a high class of drugs being prescribed to so many of our people in our, in our society. Low, we've seen this time and time again, but I think this goes to show you how much money the pharmaceutical companies have invested into this, into these statin products and how much um, they've kind of almost bought our medical professionals. I think our medical professionals are trying to do a really good job, but they don't have all of the information at their disposal. They're given the snippets of the research that the pharmaceutical reps want them to see. So they want them to see like, oh, well, statins are good. We have to keep cholesterol low. But if we look at the full scale of research that's out there, we know that lower levels of, all of, well, of cholesterol are not cardioprotective. The higher levels of cholesterol are more cardioprotective. So that means that a higher cholesterol doesn't mean we're necessarily going to have heart attacks and heart disease and all of the, the bad consequences. In fact, we need cholesterol to be able to have our bodies process hormones and to have it in our cell and our lipid barriers in every cell. So low cholesterol can be more dangerous. Uh, I'm not going to get totally onto that soapbox today, uh, but if you are worried about your cholesterol and you want to lower it, there's a lot of things you can do. You can... And it's not stop eating eggs and stop eating bacon. Most of the time your cholesterol is produced from the sugars and the white flours and the processed foods that we're eating. So if you want to work on your cholesterol, please, I beg you, start eating real whole foods. Eat your vegetables, eat your nuts and your seeds and your grass-fed proteins and your um, pasture-raised pork and your fish and your salmon and your tuna, right? Eat really good, healthy, whole foods. Stay away from, you know, the fast food burgers and the um, highly processed fried foods and the pastries that you get at the grocery store and the sodas, the high sugar, the like I said earlier, the white sugars, the white flours, the processed foods. If you can get away from those foods and replace it instead with whole foods, you will see your cholesterol numbers change, right? There are some people out there that have familial hypercholesterolemity, familial hypercholesterolemia. Uh, Try and say that a lot of times. It's kind of a hard word to say. There are a very few number of people that might really have to worry about high cholesterol because they have genetic predisposition, predispositions. That's not most of us. Most of us need to just do the hard work day in, day out of eating better foods, right? Now, if your triglycerides are high, that you can also decrease your alcohol. We know that triglycerides are really impacted by alcohol. So if you have tri high triglycerides, and we know that triglycerides are more linked to heart problems and heart disease, uh, limit that alcohol, get more exercise, lose weight, right? We know that obesity can have an impact on triglyceride levels. And again, if you're gonna be eating more of those good foods, you're gonna naturally see those cholesterol numbers and triglyceride numbers get in the right direction. So that's really what we're looking at, right? So that's my cholesterol lesson for you today. The next thing on here is my chemistries, um, my glucose. So many times we have our fasting glucose tested and we want to be under 100, right? I just read a stat the other day that said like nine, only 8% of Americans are what we consider a metabolically uh, flexible and are able to process the foods we have without our glucose and our insulin going crazy. That's not a good number. We need a lot more of us who have a lot better metabolic flexibility than just 8% of us. And that's where that glucose comes in. So mine was pretty good. It was 90. Um, 
Would I, do I wish it was a little lower than that? Yeah. Uh, so that glucose, that fasting glucose, takes the snapshot of how much um, sugar is still in your blood after you fast for at least eight hours. So you need it to be under 100. If you're at that 100 or 110 range, they're going to say you're borderline high. You're probably pre-diabetic, right? If you're if you're way higher, you know, if you're over 125, 130, they're probably going to tell you you're diabetic. And then we need to look at that as well. I'll do another video sometime on um, diabetes and what you can do because just because you've got a pre-diabetes or a diabetic diagnosis does not mean that you need to stay that way. It is a reversible condition, right? So the next thing they measured was uh, hemoglobin A1C. So A1C is one of those tests that I recommend everyone get along with fasting glucose because A1C is going to show a three month long duration of how well your body is processing sugar. And if that number is in a better range, that means that you're probably more metabol metabolically flexible, like I was just talking about, which was what we really want. So I don't know why we don't do more A1C readings, because like I said, it gives us a snapshot of three months, not just eight hours. So mine was 5.3. I'm okay with that. It's definitely in the good range. Anything under six is what we'd like to see. I would like to see it a little bit lower, but I'm actually okay with 5.3. I've been doing a better job of eating more protein, eating less sugars in the last year. Uh, last time I had A1C done was probably four or five years ago, last time I had an insurance uh, physical done, and it was 5.6. So knowing that it's 5.3 and trending in the right direction, that's what I'm really happy about, right? All right, so what else did I have on here? I had... Oh, blood urea nitrogen, that was totally normal. Creatinine was normal. Most of this stuff gets into the weeds, you know, and I'm not as worried uh, about these, but all of my numbers, I could show you my tests. Everything that I had was well within the normal range and that's what we want to see. I didn't have anything that was crazy or that I'm worried about at this point. Um, so that's really good, right? I mean, my white blood counts, white blood count was really low, normal. There was no red blood count in my urine, which was really great. Um, really, really happy with what I saw overall. I wasn't anticipating a whole lot less than that. Um, and still, it's good to see it. It's good to get these tests done every once in a while. I really would love to get my tests done and my blood work done once a year, but I also know that I have to pay for it out of pocket and it gets expensive, like I was saying earlier. I know that there are clinics popping up that are allowing um, people to come in off the street and get some of these tests done for a much more reasonable amount. And that's that's awesome. You know, I, I wanna see more of that functional medicine available to us as people, as just regular people that are able and want to know what's going on with our bodies so we can manage it and make sure that we are, uh, again, moving in the needle in the right direction. Now, if I had my druthers and I was able to have any other tests done um, with that blood draw that I had that day, I also would have had my vitamin D tested. I think vitamin D is extremely important for our overall health and most of us are extremely deplete in it. I have a test kit that I need to do that I've been putting off doing because I just don't like to prick my finger. <laughs> I'm a chiropractor for a reason. I don't like blood, right? Um, but I want to see my vitamin D and I'll do a whole video on vitamin D. I would love to see my fasting insulin level. Fasting insulin is very similar to that fasting glucose, but you're looking at the insulin level over that eight hours of not eating. And it shows more sensitive numbers quicker than you would see with their fasting glucose. So if your fasting insulin was high, we would have an idea, oh man, maybe we're not as metabol metabolically flexible as we thought we were. We need to do something about it, right? But I didn't get that, maybe next time. I would also love to see C-reactive protein as a test on a regular basis. C-reactive protein shows how much inflammation is in our bodies. Many of us are dealing with chronic inflammation from stress, from poor diets, from not exercising. So if we could get that, uh, that uh, C-reactive protein, I also think that could be very, very beneficial, beneficial and um, something that we should watch over the course of time as well. And the other thing I would love to see is my omega-3 to omega-6 fatty acid ratio. That is not a test that's typically done. I think it could be very, very smart and good for again, for us to look at it over the long term. Um, it's not one that's looked at a lot, but because I think it's just um, not in the public sphere right now. Uh, but again, it's gonna show us how much 
inflammation is happening in our bodies. Most of us have very, very high omega-6 levels and not enough omega-3 levels. That's why we supplement with fish oils or flaxseed oils, krill oil, to keep that ratio um, more balanced. But again, that was not a test I had done. I wish I could have had it done. I am extremely happy with the results that I did get from the um, life insurance policy blood work that I had. And I'm gonna continue to do everything that I normally do on a regular basis to keep these numbers high. I work out almost every day. I lift weights three, four times a week. I get lots of steps every day. I drink a lot of water. I drink very, very little alcohol. Um, you know, I try to get enough sleep. All of those factors are gonna what be important in, in what goes and gets, what we get out of the numbers on a regular basis. These numbers are critical for us to know how we are doing uh, short-term and long-term for our health. And knowing how to interpret them, interpret them is also extremely important. So if I can be a value in, um, if you're interested in learning anything more about this topic in terms of what to look at with blood draws, let me know. I'll see what I can do. Um, thanks for tuning in today. I hope this was of a value and use to you. If it was, please hit the thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and stay tuned. I've got new videos coming out every Monday and Thursday for you. Can't wait to help you stay aligned and alive.